In wetland, woodland, and sandy habitats throughout the Americas, there's a huge, voracious, predatory insect with one of the strangest hunting behaviors you'll ever see that can take down even the most venomous and defensive of insect prey. Oh yeah, did I mention that this is a fly? Yes, one of those flies. Today we are out in a sandy marsh habitat here in South Florida to search for one of these massive flies. The way we're searching is by shuffling through the grass, net in hand, and keeping track of any movement we see or hear near the ground. Now what we're out here looking for, we'll probably hear before we see. These flies are impressively large, and because of that, they make a sound when they fly unlike many other smaller flies you might be used to. Well, not what we're looking for. This is another one of the strangest flies you can find out in the wetlands of South Florida. This is Brachypremna dispellens, a massive crane fly with a leg span about the size of my hand. Unlike the carnivorous fly we're on the lookout for, this crane fly is herbivorous, with the completely aquatic larvae eating plant matter underneath the water, and the adults, while they normally do not eat, being able to drink flower nectar if necessary. All right, let's keep looking. With every step, it seemed every cool fly under the sun made its way out of the grass except for our predatory target, until... Oh my goodness, I just saw one flying. They make this really loud helicoptery buzzing sound, and it is probably about two feet away from me. This is why I'm speaking super quietly right now. I'm going to try and net it up and show it to you guys close up to the camera. All right, children, this is what I have in my net right here is one of the strangest flies in the entire world. A hanging thief. This thing doesn't even look like a fly. Look at those long spindly legs, that long sharp beak-like proboscis, and just the weird hairy body. Now this is a member of the family Acillidae, or the robber flies, which already themselves are some of the strangest flies in the entire world. Robber flies are some of the top predators of the insect world and can easily take down insect prey that is larger in size than they are themselves. Now all robber fly species share a very similar general hunting tactic where they will sit and wait on a perch. When they see a flying insect fly by, they will then shoot themselves at that insect and snatch it in midair almost instantaneously. Then they move their prey to another perch and use that long, thin, sharp proboscis to inject a neurotoxic venom into their prey. Now you might be wondering, why am I holding this then? Well, since these are insect specialists, the neurotoxic venom is actually harmless to humans. And you don't have to worry about these biting you unprovoked. Anyways, after they have demobilized their prey with their neurotoxic venom, they then inject digestive enzymes to liquefy the inside of their prey and then use the very same proboscis to suck up the nutrients out of their insect prey. Now, robber flies in general are strange, but these are probably the strangest out of all the robber flies in my opinion, just because of their very weird and specific hunting strategy. Now these things have evolved numerous very strange adaptations to make them some of the best robber flies at specializing at hunting bees and wasps. You might notice two strange things about this robber fly. Very, very long legs and a very unusually long proboscis. Both of these are highly useful for two reasons. One, the very long spindly legs and golden brown coloration of these flies helps them blend in almost perfectly with the dead grasses of these open marshy environments. And two, once these have hunted down a bee or a wasp, they will use the two front very long legs to hang upside down from a perch like a long blade of grass, and then use their back four very long legs to keep their prey stabilized. Now since they eat mostly bees and wasps, just think, those have a stinger and they are more venomous than this robber fly. And if a bee or a wasp were to sting the face of this robber fly, that's game over. But these hanging thieves have a way of combating this. Their proboscis is super long and they hold their prey using their long legs as far away from their face as possible to where this robber fly can inject the bee or wasp with its neurotoxic venom without having to worry about the bee or wasp going around and stinging this robber fly in the face. This very unusual hunting strategy makes these some of the most successful robber fly species and some of the strangest looking fly species in general out in these open marshy habitats here in Northern Palm Beach County. This species right here is one I have never seen before. This is Diogmedes salutans, which is one of the 
least commonly seen species here in Florida, and I'm actually right at the southernmost end of their range, northern Palm Beach County. This species is basically only found in these dry grassy areas in open marshes, where they, just like other Diogmini species, will be out here hunting the huge variety of bees and wasps that are out here as well. Now even though all the Diogmini species are overall this kind of golden brown coloration, there is still variety in color patterns for me to be able to identify this species confidently. Most Diogmini species in Florida, except for two, have very bold dark markings on the scutum, or that plate covering the top of the thorax, that kind of dome-shaped thorax segment. Diogmini salutins and Diogmini crudelis are the only two species in Florida that have very faded scutum markings. But this is definitely not crudelis, as Diogmini crudelis is, even though this is huge for a fly, significantly larger, and also has much bolder dark markings on the abdomen. So this is absolutely incredible, finally finding Diogmini salutins and finally being able to show you guys the amazing hanging thief fly. It's time to let this absolutely gorgeous fly go though. But I hope you enjoyed learning all about this incredible insect.